Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 31 years of practice pharmacy. I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition, nutritional supplementation. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges your loved one may be dealing with. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Our number today and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our second segment. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. David Seaman, who has uh, written a book called The Deflame Diet. It's all about inflammation and anti-inflammation. Really easy to understand, easy to read book, uh, based on a lot of the ideas we talk about here on the bright side. Dr. Seaman is a, actually a chiropractor, and his website is deflame.com. Got some good things to say. We'll be talking to Dr. Seaman at the bottom of the hour. So if you've got calls, questions about the longevity products or business or any of the supplements we talk about here on the program or anything health or nutrition, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll be talking to David Seaman at the bottom of the hour. If you want to purchase any of our longevity products, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 8 Six six seven three five twenty four seventy. That's eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy, or you can sign up right off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you you're an entrepreneur, or you're entrepreneurially minded, or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, I personally have been in business for myself now since uh, since I stopped doing mainstream pharmacy at Albert. Since pharmacy. That was my last regular pharmacy job back in 1993, and I've been pretty much an entrepreneur ever since, and I love it. You make your own hours, work out of your home, no boss, punch, no clock to punch, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and when it comes to health and nutrition, if you join the Longevity family, you can help change the world using nutritional supplements. If nutritional supplementation has changed your life, or if you're just the kind of person who likes health and likes nutrition and likes the idea of using nutrition supplements and, and health and lifestyle strategies instead of medical strategies to get better. And if you want to make some money at the same time, you want to join the Brightside Ben team. Please call 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about NAC, NAC, my favorite non-essential nutrient. It's a detox substance. It's, it's a component of the body's primary detoxifier, glutathione. It's an anti-cancer substance. It cleanses out the liver. If you're an alcoholic, you're drinking a lot of alcohol, or if you're just going out 
periodically in drinking alcohol. If you're on prescription drugs, if you're on prescription drugs, you definitely want to be on NAC. There's no question about it. Absolutely. And it's so inexpensive. It's crazy not to, not to use it. We're going to talk a little bit later on about how important it is for brain health. We'll talk about it how, uh, a little bit later about how important it is for heart health, how it can stabilize blood fats. And that's really what we've been talking about now for the last day or two about this idea of blood fats and cholesterol, the cholesterol hypothesis, this crazy idea that somehow cholesterol is this evil villain and you got to lower your cholesterol. People are obsessed with their cholesterol numbers. Doctors, uh, uh, less, uh, or you need lower levels of LDL and you need higher levels of HDL every five or 10 years or 15 years. It's just about drugs, folks. Who do you think makes these, who do you think makes these standards up? The drug companies, the medical model. They tell you how much, how high or how low your cholesterol has to be. If they need to sell more drugs, they just lower this, lower the requirements or they raise the requirements. Cholesterol is not an evil villain. It's a building substance, period. It's a growth substance. It's an anabolic substance. It's an important substance. It's what makes us different from plants. And its presence in the blood in excessive amounts is simply the result of bad living. It's not some kind of crazy mistake that the liver is making or the cells are making. They're just stupid and they make too much cholesterol. This is what the medical model wants you to think, that the doctor is smarter than your body. No, the doctor is way dumber than your body. The, and I, again, I, I don't want to pick on doctors. The medical model is way dumber than your body. If you are making too much cholesterol, it's because you've tricked the body through bad living into thinking that it's supposed to be in a growth anabolic building mode. And what does that? Sugar and insulin. This is why diabetics, diabetes, and, and or dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, and elevated cholesterol go hand in hand. Diabetics all know this. And the good news is, is when you stop eating the sugar, not only does your blood sugar drop, not only will your insulin levels drop, but your cholesterol will drop too. Test it out yourself. Go keto. Go low carb. Go paleo. Keep in mind, uh, too much protein will get turned into sugar, and that will elevate your cholesterol, so you got to be careful there. But just reduce your caloric intake and your, uh, your intake of fast-burning carbs. Your cholesterol will drop like a stone without a doctor. Or use chromium and vanadium and niacin, nutrients that help the body process, uh, process sugar. And again, your cholesterol will drop like a stone. No statins required, no pharmacist required, no doctor required, no medical model required. And this is really the bottom line here, folks. The medical model is not our friend, unless you're dealing with some kind of emergency condition. And, and again, you know, that's, there is a place for, the, for medical treatment, obviously, for infections, for, for, uh, for uh, emergencies, for catastrophic kinds of things. But when it comes to primary care, when it comes to bi uh, biological markers for long-term disease, for risk management, it's not a doctor issue. And nothing exemplifies this craziness of medicalization. That's what it's really called, is medicalization. A guy like a guy named Thomas Sass, S-Z-A-Z, -Z, has written a lot of books on medicalization. It's this creepiness, creep, uh, creeping nature of medicine, how it, it inserts ourselves into our lives. Not just now, not just for emergencies and for infections, now to, to, help, to tell us to put our seatbelts on. That's what medicalization is. It's like the, it's the nanny state. It's this idea that we are too stupid, our body is too stupid, we need doctors, we need a medical professional, we need medicine. Check with your doctor. Make sure you check with your doctor. Make sure you ask your doctor. My doctor ordered me. My doctor told me. It's this idea that we are too stupid to do it ourselves and that our body is too stupid to handle its own business. Not true. And it doesn't serve us. And when it comes to cholesterol, once we understand how valuable this molecule is, once we understand that statin mania is counterproductive, it's anti-health, and once we understand that the reason it's being dispensed to everybody and that they want everybody over the age of 60 or 70 to take it is not because of us, it's because of them so they can make more money, once we understand all of this stuff, then we're going to know, then, then we'll understand, then we'll really understand how anti-humanity the institution, the pharmacomedical institution is. Cholesterol is critical. It's a, it is estrogen. It's testosterone. It is cortisol. It is vitamin D. Yesterday I said, it, you know, most, most people will tell you, well, cholesterol gets turned into vitamin D and cortisol and testosterone. That's not a healthy way of looking at it, in my opinion. It is cholesterol. It is vitamin D. It is cortisol. It is testosterone. And suppressing it means you suppress all of those hormones. It's growth and repair and, and, and anabolic. It's building. You want to suppress your cholesterol production, you suppress growth and repair. You suppress anti-aging. All right.
I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday. 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 at Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, where you will find all the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase longevity products. I'm sorry, you can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, or transdermal C serum, transdermal C balm, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're looking for powerful skin health products, if you haven't been satisfied with your skin health products, if you've got a medicine cabinet filled with skin health products and filled with promises and filled with celebrity endorsements, and you're just tired of it. I'm tired of it. I've been in the skin, formulating skincare products for 35 years. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. That's why I created my true skin health products. You shouldn't have to pay for water, people. You shouldn't have to pay for oil. You shouldn't have to pay for silicon. You shouldn't have to pay for fillers and waxes and preservatives and fragrances and things that don't do anything for your skin. It's not fair. It's not right. That's what this program is about. It's about restoring equity to the average person, to the regular person. There's so many things that are just not fair and not right. Healthcare, the drug business, the skin business, the food business, the little guy gets screwed everywhere. Everywhere you turn, the little guy gets screwed, but it doesn't have to be that way. If we just understand what's happening and we understand just a little bit about how our bodies work, that's what this program is about. This is the bright side. Simply by understanding a few basic mechanisms that are really just common sense, it's not really difficult, we can inoculate ourselves from the virus, the, the parasitic virus that is our medical model, our food model, our skin health model, our media model. All right, 844 is our number. We're going to talk to Dr. Seaman about the deflame diet in our next segment. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Kelly in Minneapolis. Welcome to the Bright Side, Kelly. Hi there. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's going on? Um, yeah, so my son is going through puberty, and for the last three years, he's had gynecomastia. Oh, no. And, is he I'm eating? Sorry? That's not a good thing. Uh, he no. shouldn't have gynecomastia. Gynecomastia, uh, enlarged male breasts, gynecomastia, that's what that means. Uh, that's a sign that he's getting too much female hormone somewhere. Not, unfortunately, not all that uncommon because female hormone is a, a waste product of a lot of uh, industrial processes, and soy can, ha can act like a xenoestrogen or a, a, a fake estrogen, if you will. He should be producing testosterone. First thing, first thing you want to get him, uh, if he, he's probably carrying too much body fat. Remember, uh, you probably know this, estrogen is made in body fat. Body fat also is a place that, uh, or fat is a place where the body will store toxins, including uh, excess estrogen. So you gotta, he, he's, got, he's probably overweight, correct? He's not actually. In fact, he's probably underweight. And he's got gynecomastia? He does. At okay, least well, that's, what the, that's what our doctors diagnosed him with. Well, does it look like he's got enlarged breasts? It does. Okay, so that's then there's a, then there's an issue there, and it, it, the fact that he's skinny and has enlarged breasts means his body fat proportion is off. So he may not have a lot of fat, but he, he's carrying a lot of body fat proportionally. Does that make sense? It may not be like just in raw numbers if he's skinny, but he's got too much body fat by percentage. So, so what you got to do is you got to get him building muscle. That's the okay. first thing. Get him into some resistance training when he comes home from the gym. Have him do uh, uh, his nutritional supplements, especially protein, the B complex, also zinc, 50 milligrams a day. Have him sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day. Make sure he's using uh, his uh, his ultimate EFAs, about nine capsules a day, especially when he comes home from the gym. I'd be on, I'd be using the ultimate Selenium as well. 
Okay. okay. So you want to be fo- uh, if he's if he's a sugar eater, that's going to mess things up. So you got to get is. him. Then you got to get him to start weaning himself off the sugar. The body can use sugar for energy, obviously, but it can also use protein for energy, and it can also use fat for energy. What you want to do is you want to be shifting him in to more more fat burning, so that he's getting uh, getting more energy from fat. And the way you do that is by limiting carbs, restricting carbs, and also using protein. And it's not enough to just to eat the protein. He's got to use it, and that's why the resistance training is so important. Get him in the gym, okay. resistance training. When he comes home, have him do his supplements and get him as best as you can because kids, like anybody else, are addicted to sugar. You got to get him to wean himself. You got to get him to wean himself off of the fast burning carbohydrates. It wouldn't hurt him to use nutrients that help him process sugar. Um, and that includes the B vitamins from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, chromium, vanadium, as well as the aforementioned zinc. Magnesium will help as well. And also selenium will also help the ultimate selenium. Uh, if he's, if he just absolutely positively can't wean himself off the sugar, make him a fiber drink once or twice a day either by using vegetable juices, which is like a fiber drink, homemade, or also uh, a fiber, I call it a fiber beverage, where you grind up flax seeds and chia seeds, and then uh, add water, stir it up, and maybe a little bit of honey if you need something sweet, or cinnamon. If you use cinnamon, you won't have to use as much honey. Cinnamon will allow you to cut the sweet out, because cinnamon has its own kind of sweetness associated with it. You can throw in some clove and and some nutmeg, that's what I do, and that's really filling, and it will uh, kind of cut into the sweet tooth, and it's also a good source of protein and fat and other building substances. All right. Makes sense, Kelly? It does. Totally. All right. Take care. Have a beautiful day. All right. Let's go to Carl, the truth raider. What's up, Carl? We're going to run out of time. Good morning yeah, to you. You have a guest at the bottom of the hour, so I'll have to get my uh, my philosophical warning and report on my stepmom on another call. Okay. But this is the segment I wanted to share, my testimony about giving to live, living to give. It's a little poem I have. Okay. I give to live, be, being the truth raider. Okay. I go out and I tell pe- my, uh, everybody around that I know about anal sisal cysteine, or how that is, or NAC. I tell them about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I even include vitamin B and vitamin C. I even tell them about the benefits of vitamin E. But when I go out out to the world, my my purpose is to make everybody well. Now, when I go to court, I bring in the Bill of Rights and Constitution and the true nature of, of the rule of law. I give them hell. I break down their statutory codes. So that's what I do, and that's all I have to tell. All right. Well, thank you so much, and we appreciate you, Truth Raider. Have an awesome day, buddy. Good to talk to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Truth Raider. Cut you off there. All right, Don and Atlanta, you get the last word. What's going on, my friend? Oh, did we lose Don? Don, you there? Oh, I don't know if we lost Don. Do we have Don there, Blake? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. there. Hey, Don. Hey, sorry about that, Ben. No worries. A quick, uh, quick question. It's almost yes, sir. like a fill in the blank. Okay. Niacin does for blood pressure what blank does for the cardiovascular system. Niacin does for blood pressure what niacin does for the cardiovascular system. Same thing. The blood pressure really? is the cardiovascular okay. system. All right, but if you okay. want, if you you're, you're looking for, if you're trying to get me to, if you're trying to, to get out some nutrients for the heart, is that what you're thinking? Well, specifically, I've been waking up with a little bit of pressure in my chest. I'm not sure what that is, and I love the uh, like it sounds like it's no. First thing in the morning, you get a surge of stress hormone. This is a good thing. Cortisol okay. is what, what's what wakes us up. So you may be you may be getting a little bit too much. So what you want to do is you want to start doing some deep breathing with first thing in the morning. And I'm not saying 100% that's what this is, but that's what it sounds like. You may be getting a surge of cortisol, and that's causing your uh, causing your, your blood vessels to close up a little bit. That's one of the effects of uh, cortisol. So, Could it be from uh, exercising too late at night? Um, unlikely. Are you having problems sleeping at night? No, no, no. I'm out. You fall right asleep and you don't wake up in the yeah. middle of the night? I would say has to be, yeah. I would say I would be blaming cortisol. Deep breathing first thing in the morning, relaxation, anything you do to relax the body first thing in the morning. Vitamin E is also yeah. really neat for helping with cortisol. Four hundred IU a day. I gotta move, Don. Call back tomorrow and we'll finish up if you like. Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. Got Don Seaman coming up. Hunters. Okay, we are back on 
on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You'll find all the longevity products as well as a search engine where you can search various programs by topic. If you have a, a, a client or a loved one or you yourself have a health challenge that you want help with, you can head over to benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com and check out our search search engine and archives. You can also purchase all the longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, and Transdermal Sea Serum, all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so um, I love talking to our guests. We always have interesting folks on the program today. Uh, we get to talk to Dr. David Seaman, who's got an interesting book out called The Deflame Diet. It's about inflammation. You know, we always talk about inflammation on this program. There is no such thing as a long-term chronic health challenge without some kind of underlying inflammatory condition, mostly, largely, coming in through foods we eat and through the digestive system. And thus, I am very happy to welcome our guest, uh, Dr. David Seaman, to the program. He's the author of the book, The Deflame Diet. Deflame your diet, body, and mind. Uh, Dr. Seaman actually came up with the term deflame, and his website is www.deflame.com. Please welcome to the bright side, Dr. David Seaman. Hey, Doc. Hey, thanks for having me, Ben. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for being on, and thanks for your book as well. Really interesting, really easy to read. Uh, I'm gonna, I want to talk to you a little bit about the book, but tell us about yourself real quick and how you got into understanding how important foods are and inflammation is as a cause of disease and some of the other things you talk about here in the book. Well, I, I, I got a bachelor's degree in biology with a, with a concentration in nutrition. And then I, I went to chiropractic college because I was intrigued. I was, I was using to be chiropractic college or physical therapy. I didn't want to do surgery or, 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 or meds. And so I went to chiropractic college. And then uh, this in my first year or so, uh, we, were, uh, we, we learned about people who responded and didn't respond. And no one ever really talked about why people didn't respond. And if you do, if you do go to a chiropractor, if you're not feeling better in four treatments, it's probably not going to work. And I wanted to know why. Hmm. And so uh, shortly after I graduated, literally a year after I graduated, I was sitting in a neuroscience postgrad class. And it dawned on me for the first time, because I wasn't worried about exams or anything, that the pain system is driven by inflammatory chemistry, and I saw it differently than I did when I was in school. And those inflammatory chemicals, I realized most of them were related to what we eat. So that's what turned me on to it, and that was in 1987, so 30 years okay. ago I started doing this. Okay, so let me stop you right there. Are you saying that the, the even the chiropractic model, I mean, we were always ripping on the mainstream medical model, and, and their ignorance is, you know, that's there's, we can't go into that because that's so obvious. But even the chiropractic model doesn't recognize or didn't recognize the, the importance or the relevance or the critical nature of, of inflammation as a cause of disease? Well, actually, it's very interesting. Uh, the founder of the profession, D.D. Palmer, he actually said in 1910, 1900, that inflammation is at the root of most diseases. But if you go to, for example, physical therapy school, you go to med school and you become an orthopedic surgeon, you go to chiropractic college, and to, to graduate a chiropractor and not know how to manipulate you use your hand, you know, it's kind of not, you're not really a chiropractor. So you have to focus on your, on your, on your interventions. But isn't it anti-inflammatory? Isn't it? Aren't those interventions themselves anti-inflammatory? Well, they are. You see, that was 30 years ago. It wasn't thought like that. I see. Yeah, 30 okay. years ago, that really wasn't on the radar. 30 years ago, uh, mainstream science did not consider chronic inflammation due to eating poorly, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, and stress. There was no direct connection from those four drivers of chronic inflammation to the underlying cause of most chronic conditions that did not exist. An actual fact, shockingly, actual fact. That is shocking. Yes, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm it, sorry. It didn't exist. It didn't exist. And so in 2002, I published a paper, which is findable on PubMed, which is the National Library of Medicine's 
website for articles, literally the first paper ever published in the scientific literature where I, where I in, introduced the term, the diet-induced pro-inflammatory state. Wow. And in 2004, Harvard researchers were looking at diet and inflammation because it kind of like caught on. It wasn't because of me, but it caught on. And so, so they referenced three papers that were available. These are Harvard and CDC guys, Center of Disease Control guys. In 2004, they referenced three papers. There are only three to reference. Mine was one of them. That wow. just speaks to yeah. That just speaks to how that concept did not exist in medicine, That's awesome. or anywhere else. Yeah. So certainly, they, like Cairo, it's just it's just it's physiology that was well for example. Sorry. But there's a phenomenon called postprandial inflammation that occurs no matter what you eat, correct? Right, absolutely. So even even if you eat spinach or whatever, organic, people say, oh, I'm only eating lettuce. But it, lettuce no, no. can do it. Just after you no, eat, no. there's an inflammatory response that's mounted, no matter what it is. Actually, not for those things. Not for vegetation. Yeah. Postprandial inflammation occurs based Fats. upon the degree of... Yeah, it, it occurs based upon the degree of, 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 of glucose elevation and lipid elevation postprandial. So it's called postprandial glycemia, postprandial lipemia. What about? That do, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What about lectins? What about components in, in, in vegetation like gluten and lectins and such? They, those can cause an inflammatory response. No. But that is not in spinach, though. And, lectins. And what, yeah, well, whatever lectins are in green vegetables are not are not inflammatory. Uh, yeah, humans have adapted to them. We have less adaptation to lectins in uh, uh, well, no adaptation for 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 lectins found in uh, legumes, for example. They must be cooked, or you can have a real problem with 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 raw lectins from from legumes. So 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 your 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 whole grain and your legumes, those lectins are potentially inflammatory. Got it. So you're you're basically saying that it's the glyce the the uh, gluc the sugar compounds and the, and the lipid compounds that are causing the postprandial inflammation. And I do know that's well, true. I, yeah. I have read a lot about that. All right. Yeah, so, so go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. I'll, I, I'm sorry to keep stepping on you here, um, <laughs> okay. uh, because I got so much I want to ask you here. So, so we use this. We're, call, we're using this term inflammation. We throw it around a lot. I mean, everybody, even lay people, have heard it, uh, hear it a, a dozen times a day. Inflammation, anti-inflammation. What exactly is inflammation, as you as you define it? Okay. Well, I, I, so that your listeners know that this is not how I define it. The problem is when things get thrown around left and right, like 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 people. Who uh, actually just recently Joe Rogan ripped on Kairos, and and I'm listening to this interview with this blogger who is, has no scientific publications at all, and and, and he goes, well, you know, I avoid gluten, and uh, and, and and I avoid gluten, but well, doesn't it turn to sugar? No, gluten's a protein, man. I mean, maybe Joe said this. Time. Yeah, Joe Did said you? this. <laughs> I love Joe Rogan, by the way. Yeah, he's good. I know. He, no, I do, too. But, you know, everybody can, like, somehow, you know, he just should have held back on this one anyway. So, so there's a misconception. Like, I'm gluten-free. Well, what's gluten? I don't know. So, 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 so there's a lot of, 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 in, of information out there where the, where, the, where the general public throws around words as you yeah. So, yeah. So, so, for example, if well, you Well, Doc, I, I hate to, Dr. Seaman, I hate to do this. we got to take a commercial break, but this is so interesting. Okay, hang on. All right. We're talking to Dr. Uh, David Seaman. His book is D, The Deflame Diet. His website is deflame.com. Really cool book, easy to understand, very practical. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll finish up with uh, Dr. David Seaman when we come back. We are back on the bright side talking to Dr. David Seaman about his book, The Deep Flame Diet. The website is www.deflame.com. Okay, so Dr. Seaman, you there? Yes. All right, so continue on. We're talking about the, the word inflammation, and you were very astutely pointing out how we just throw words around glibly without knowing what they mean, and inflammation may fall into that category. So continue, please. In, inflammation actually absolutely does fall in that category. So people like wig out, like, will this inflame me? Will that inflame me? If you take a young kid who's 22 years of age and he has a donut once or twice a day, that he will have or she will have a postprandial low-grade inflammatory reaction but if the rest of the day is otherwise fine, they maintain their body weight, you know, a donut a day is not a big deal. Now, I don't eat a donut a day, but my point is you don't have to be, like, perfectly clean across the Got board it. 
to because what happens is the biggest driver of now now let's just say that you maintained your body weight for 20 years on donuts odds are you're going to flame up you just won't be overweight now most people of course two-thirds of the adult population are overweight and we're not overweight because of spinach and broccoli that is for sure we're not overweight because of of, of having steak and broccoli and a and a baked potato we're, we're overweight because of the endless sugar flour and refined oil calories that we eat that we basically have a low-grade addiction response to and think about eating mm-hmm. all the time people wake up in the middle of the night if they do and they're hungry what are they going to mm-hmm. do grab salad no they're going to mm-hmm. grab something sweet how much of that is how much of that's emotional Huge, huge. <laughs> Eating itself is emotional because because food makes you feel good in the moment, and that feel good mm-hmm. is emotion. If we didn't have taste buds, mm-hmm. no, no one almost actually. They even in, in rat studies, they found that rats actually develop a preference for a sugar sweetened solution, even though their taste buds were eliminated. Mm-hmm. We're That's wired. Powerful. Yeah. We're hardwired. Dopamine, for example, oxytocin. There you go. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. So, 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 let's get back to this inflammation. In your, the way you define it, and and perhaps generally, what is inflammation exactly? Okay. So, inflammation is when any cell in the body can release either happy chemicals or unhappy chemicals. Too many unhappy chemicals basically are inflammatory chemicals. So, if we do, if we, if if. I slept only three hours last night. I would be more inflamed this morning, measured by these these inflammatory chemicals, uh-huh. called prostaglandins, cytokines, C-reactive protein is a glucotrienes, like glucotrienes, right, 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 all those guys. CRP is, is 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 the most common way to measure overall inflammation. So C-reactive so, protein for the listeners. Exactly, C-reactive yeah. protein. So if you don't sleep uh, well for for a week straight, your CRP will be elevated mm. compared to the way it was before. Now, it'll be a little bit, but the point, though, is that the body does not, does not like substantial homeostatic, you know, baseline function perturbations. So it likes to say steady state, steady state. Right. We like a steady state. So when we disrupt that steady state and we do it by, again, stress, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, and then eating the wrong stuff. So when that goes on, our cells react as if, hey, something's wrong here, and they start to dump out inflammation signals because inflammation is the first thing that happens in the healing response. Very good point. Right? If you sprain your, right? you yes. your ankle, yeah. you want to have inflammation because you don't have healing. healing. There's no healing right. without inflammation. That's that's a exactly. really good point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Think of it like this though. Imagine if you were to sprain your ankle and then just sprain it every day. Yeah. Low level chronic kind of thing, like all the time. It never never yeah. heals. You never get a chance never to heal. Heals. Yeah. 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 So. That's beautiful. All right. So listen, there's so much good stuff here. We're going to run out of time, and I want to give people some solutions. But, but real briefly, we've been talking about cholesterol on this. Well, well, we talk about it all the time, how the misunderstandings about cholesterol, how anabolic it is. It's important for growth and repair. And I was very happy to see a chapter in your book uh, that really addresses this. Real quick, talk about cholesterol and inflammation and wh- how cholesterol is so important for health. Absolutely. It's absolutely amazing. Cholesterol, LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol are both anti-inflammatory. LDL is produced in excess of HDL because the body needs more LDL than it needs HDL. Now, yeah. what happens? When you stop exercising and when you fatten up on sugar, flour, refined oils, which is what everyone fattens up on, both the LDL particle and the HDL cholesterol particle, they both transform into a free radical oxidized... Oxy- infl- oxycholesterol. Oxycholesterol. Right, yeah. And it happens to both HDL and LDL. Interesting. And it's the LDL that's oxidized that the immune system reacts to as if it's an antigen mm-hmm. as in a bacterial antigen. Mm-hmm. So we're not, we're addressing cholesterol because that's so easy to target, but nobody's addressing oxycholesterol. Correct. Well, you have to also realize that like if we actually direct, this is really interesting about, about cholesterol. What, what actually helps to create part of the problem is, you, know, is, well, you've all, you obviously talk about metabolic syndrome on your show. Uh, a metabolic, lot, yes. Yeah. The metabolic syndrome state is one where you produce extra LDL and you, you either or both produce less HDL, mm-hmm. and then you, and then you, we more rapidly degrade HDL, and mm-hmm. that now metabolic the, syndrome. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, no, go and ahead. That, and that metabolic syndrome state 
is what causes the oxidation of LDL and HDL cholesterol, wow. rendering them, because HDL is supposed to keep LDL cholesterol in a, in a, in a, in a non-oxy state. It's and protective. So, yeah, and so what happens is when you eat sugar and flour, the insulin response is what actually stimulates the enzyme that statins inhibit. How fascinating. HMGA, co-reductase. Right, HMGA, and co-reductase. More, right, and that means more, more coenzyme Q10 and, and more, of the, more of the anabolic stuff because cholesterol is a building substance, correct? Well, you don't make more CoQ10 when you're, when you're hyperinsulinemic. That's the thing, because, because when, you, when you shut down from HMG coway, it goes four ways. And, 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 and the big biosynthetic pathway is, is, is for cholesterol, all your steroids, bile acids, vitamin D, all, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And so, and so what gets driven, it appears, more is the cholesterol uh, pathway out of that four. And so then they got to give you a statin, and then when they do that, they turn off all four pathways. Which That's means you lose CoQ10, you lose HEME, and HEME functions just like CoQ10 operationally to make ATP energy. Nothing, nothing makes me more embarrassed to be a pharmacist than this whole statin mania, to be, just to be clear. Oh. It's, it's an awful, awful thing. We've been talking about it for the last few days. All right, so we're going to run out of time, but I want to give people some solutions. Somebody has an autoimmune disease, they got diabetes, they're overweight, their doctor's telling them they got to be on a statin drug. Give us like three or four things that they could do right away. Okay. Well, this is like, you know, I, I would watch... The movie Fathead, uh, it shows a guy who basically spent 30 days going to McDonald's, eating less calories, walking, and he loses weight. His, 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 his HDL went down because of the trans fats. But the point is that, that of that movie, which is actually absolutely accurate, is less calories. Less calories is the most important thing that we nice. can do. Calorie a restriction. Of, yeah, a colleague of mine, uh, 40 pounds overweight, and he decides to just do a 600-calorie diet per day, and three or 400 calories was actually a double uh, cheeseburger at McDonald's. And in less than two months, he was free of his diabetes. Wow. So that just speaks to the power. Nothing is more anti-inflammatory than less calories. Okay, if you go great. less calories, that's going to disrupt your limbic eating brain, and you're going to have mm. to do a battle with your mind. So you have to become zen with your mind. The first and most important thing is zenning out your brain, making a mental commitment, use your frontal lobe to inhibit the lower drives to overeat. That is the most important thing. Forget eat this, eat that, all this BS about superfoods. No, yeah. if, if you can cure diabetes in less than a month on a, on a burger. Yeah, right. That's not a superfood. That's, that's not a superfood. No super yeah, right. So forget those words. So, 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 so what this guy could have done is he could have had that burger and then had pounds of vegetation on top of it because an entire pound of that spring mix that you can get pre-washed is only 100 calories. Yeah, right, all right. Yeah. right? All right, so, so, so cal those, calorie restrictions, zen out. What about meditation? I'm not a meditator, but if it works for you, do it. It all depends right. upon what works for you. Like, if you sit there, like, going crazy, that means you should probably go exercise. How about supplements? Supplements? I'm a, I'm a basic guy. If, 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 you're, if, if you're on a, if, if, if there's an economical issue, fish oil, vitamin D, magnesium, for no, not to treat this condition or that condition, because right. those three are involved in multiple anti-inflammatory reactions, and those three particularly in terms of magnesium and vitamin D, they're really deficient. Fish How about vitamin too. I'm so, I hate to keep interrupting you. You've so much good stuff to say. We'll have to have you back on, and we're out of time. What about vitamin D from the sun versus supplements? Uh, if you can get in the sun, sun's better. But if you okay. can't, then just take the D from supplements. All right. Hey, Doc, we're just out of time, but we'll definitely have you back on. That was very, very enlightening. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, and please send me those links when you get a chance. Okay, Dr. Seaman? You got it. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Dr. David Seaman, yeah. the book is The Deflame Diet. His website is deflame.com. It's chock full of really easy uh, easy to understand and easy to use information. The Deflame.com. Uh, deflame.com. Deflame the book is The Deflame Diet. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.